there, moguls. It's me, Marshall Silver, your personal millionaire maker. Getting very excited about my brand new show. Two hours a day, five days a week, I'm going to broadcast live to you. In the first hour of the broadcast, I'm going to give you content, information for better sex, more money, emotional, mental, physical, and even spiritual power. I'll also invite some of my cool multi-millionaire and billionaire friends onto the show to give you more direction, more advice, more strategies and gambits for having it all. The second hour is what I'm most excited about. It's when I get a chance to chat with you. Yes, you. Where you can call in, talk to me, ask me questions. And if you say the secret word of the day, you could win $5,000 cash. At the very least, if you're the most interesting call of the day, you could also win 10 ounces of freshly minted Marshall Silver 999 Fine Silver. All of that and more. Brand new Mercedes-Benz sedan or SUV up for grabs. My personal Rolls-Royce Phantom up for grabs. All the knowledge to get everything you want and so much more. All you got to do is log in to the show to get information about its release coming up. Two hours a day, five days a week, coming to you live from the bunker right here at Studio Money. I'm Marshall Silver, your personal millionaire maker. Let me bring in hypnotist Marshall Silver. It's uh, Marshall Silver, ladies and gentlemen, the world's fastest hypnotist. Hello there, my little chickadees. Marshall Silver, your personal millionaire maker with you live today. That's what makes this distinct, is that we are live every single day, five days a week, to make your life a better life. Today's no exception. Today's going to be a phenomenal show. We've got a guest that is going to blow your mind. Uh, he is the cornerstone to the success of many, many major brands that you see all over the internet. And we're going to get to him in a minute. Before we do, uh, make sure you've got a pad of paper or a place to take notes, lots of notes to take. And because this is live, of course, inside the chat, you can always ask me questions. You can always ask questions of our guest. Uh, just make sure that you go into the chat. Let us know what you want us to talk about. And this show is your show. So today, uh, the first lesson I want to give you, the first gift I want to hand over is a three-part strategy to literally getting everything you want. Three parts to getting everything you want in every single area of your life. Part number one is self-mastery. Self-mastery is total control of your thoughts and emotions. It means nothing has any power except the power that you give to it. What you focus on expands and what you believe is true for you. When you start recognizing that your entire world is based upon the frame of reference that you have to what's going on around you, everything gets easier. Finding your life less than perfect is a flat-out waste of your time. Uh, it's very Zen to say that it is what it is, and yet it is what it is. That's a fact. And the more you accept that, the more you get over thinking you have rights, therefore giving people a chance to wrong you, the better your life will be. So step into the concept of total self-mastery, total control of your thoughts and emotions, which first comes with personal responsibility, knowing that you and you alone are the only one that chooses your thoughts. Second part, make sure that as you are in that place of self-mastery, you stop giving your power away. Do not give your power away to people, places, things, experiences that are not in your control. Uh, so what, now what is the expression I use? I have a strong belief in God. And one of the most powerful words that you can use to step towards self-mastery is the word surrender surrender and find your life perfect. Because once again, finding it less than perfect is simply a waste of time. You must appreciate where you are now because where you're at later will be where you're at now then. Think about it. Number two, uh, second step in getting everything you want in every single area. Number one, you've got to have self-mastery. Otherwise, you will never find step number two, which is identify, utilize, and acquire the tools for the task at hand. So step one, self-mastery. Step two, tools for the task at hand. 
every single task has different tools. Every single thing that you want has different principles that must align for you to create exactly what you want in the way that you want it. So the proper tool for relationship, as an example, is agreements. Relationships are built on agreements. No two relationships are the same. Therefore, no two relationships could have the exact same rules or outlines or agreements that would make them successful. Yet every single relationship must have agreements, whether spoken or unspoken, frankly, for the dynamic of the relationship to work. The tool for making money, without a doubt, bottom line, learn this tool, master this tool, become fluent in this skill set, and your wealth is guaranteed, and that tool is irresistible influence. When you learn how to communicate in such a way that people beg you for what you're selling and they also believe it was their idea, you will have more wealth, more money than you know what to do with. So step one, self-mastery. Step two, take uh, figure out the proper tools that you need for the task at hand. Learn those tools, acquire those tools, utilize those tools. And then step three is where it all comes together. You can have the best mindset in the world. You can be complete, a complete master of your thoughts and emotions. You can have all the tools for the task at hand. And it still won't allow you success unless you learn number three, and that is take action in the present moment. When? Now. Tomorrow never comes. What you don't do now simply isn't going to happen. In fact, I make a little prediction that you are older than you thought you would be at this point in your life. <clears throat> Let me say that again. You are older than you thought you would be at this point in your life. And it is time for you, frankly, to get desperate. It is time for you to become a little bit frightened and a little bit on edge and a little bit motivated to say, what if I don't get one more day? I have a friend of mine that I love very much. He's not a close friend. He's an associate. He's in this field. He's one of the top speaker trainers uh, in the world. And I just found out a couple of days ago that this particular gentleman is going through some pretty substantial health challenges. And I don't really follow him. We're associates, but I don't really stay up on, frankly, anybody else's social media. I went to his social media and I realized he hadn't posted for six weeks, which is unusual for a guy that posts three times a day. And the last post that he made was a post that said, I'm not going to be posting much anymore. I'm going to focus on my health and found out that he was having some pretty major health challenges right now. Uh, having gone through open heart surgery myself, uh, it's nothing to be sneezed at. It's not something to, uh, to, to, put off or, or, or minimize. And so my prayers are with my friend. The lesson though is understanding that what you don't do now just simply doesn't get done. Fail forward fast. In fact, I have a question that I ask myself when I'm feeling kind of lost. The question's real simple. What's positive, meaning going for good, not, not protecting against losses. What's positive, powerful, meaning it's an action that I can take and productive, meaning it will move me ahead. What's a powerful, positive, and productive action that I could do right now, this very moment, and then once I've asked that question and received the answer, I take that immediate action. On today's show, we have a guest that I've been wanting to talk to for a little while. Uh, his company has done a lot of work inside the digital marketing arena. Rohan Sheth is an entrepreneur whose expertise in digital marketing has helped countless businesses skyrocket their online presence and their sales. In this episode of Marshall Silver Live, Rohan shares his strategies and insights that have made him a sought-after expert in the digital field, from leveraging social media algorithms to mastering the art of online advertising. Rohan has been sharing his comprehensive approach for years to the digital landscape. So whether you're an entrepreneur that's seeking to amplify your digital footprint, a business owner aiming to boost your online sales, or simply interested in the latest digital marketing trends, Rohan's experience offers a roadmap to online success. Without any further ado, in the comments, please welcome with a big Marshall Silver Live welcome, Rohan Chef. Welcome to the show, Rohan. Thanks for having me, Marshall. Very glad you're here. Uh, are you still up in Canada? I am still in Vancouver. Lovely. Yes, uh, I'm guess. Uh, uh, how how is the landscape in Canada right now? I know that obviously the geopolitics of the U.S. and Canada are often quite similar. Uh, what's going on in it's Canada right now? Very very interesting. Very interesting from an economic standpoint. Some big changes got announced this past week as well. So 
there's a group of us that are, you know, at a close entrepreneurs that are online world are looking at exiting as soon as we possibly can. Let's call it that. Yeah, I see a lot of my Canadian friends are saying we need to make a move. T tell me what's yeah. been happening. Uh, well, they just changed all of our taxes. Uh, capital gains got pushed over to 66%. This they announced is going to get, I guess, in June or July of this year, they're going to get pushed that over. It's just it's getting 75%, I heard. No, 66 is moving, getting getting pushed. It was at 50, it's getting pushed to 66. Right. Yeah. And I heard that in June, it's likely to go up to 75%. If that's the case, this country's done. <laughs> no, the, the country's done yeah. at 66%. Yeah. Yeah, because so because wild. basically basically what they're saying is work your ass off and then give us sixty percent of any gain you get. It makes it's no sense insane. It's yeah, crazy. It no yeah, yeah. So it is so what it is. That, beautiful country, beautiful country, but the government's just going to ruin it. I agree, and you know, obviously, yeah. it, it's looking like both the U.S. and Canada is heading the same direction, unless oh, yeah. good people, like you just said, myself and my entrepreneur friends are saying, look, we're going to move. Yeah. I just saw Trump coming out of court in New York yesterday, and that was his whole message. He said, they can attack me all they want. What they don't realize is they're destroying the whole state. Nobody is going to come to New York. Nobody's going to move to Canada with 66% tax yeah. on, on you know capital gains. It's just insane. And we're going to start seeing people fleeing and everything is cyclical so you know everything goes up and it goes down yeah. and and uh, as soon as everybody flees then the government says oh my god we made a mistake you know maybe we should correct this so that people want to be here again but i think the challenge is it's going to start being too late it's going to uh, get too late i think and especially because i've already seen just in the last probably two years alone well you know since we came out of the covid craziness the amount of friends of mine that have left and moved to the came caymans or moved to dubai specifically being canadian we have a little bit more um use cases to go there and it's just wild it's like now people are people that were considering it kind of on the edge are like nope i'm out i'm one of those i'm out i'm out within the next 12 months so yeah i get it yeah. Yeah. so uh, enough of all that we'll, we'll get to that in the time the, the time that it's appropriate tell me uh in our audience all about you about your history about your background and uh, why you're excited to be here today yeah, first of all, obviously, thanks for having me. Um, my background comes from running paid traffic for some of the biggest names. Well, prior to running for some of the biggest names, we ran all the big events, like the free to fee events, which you're very, very familiar with. Um, we ran the biggest guys that were around right up until COVID and the fun FTC run. Uh, from there, we transitioned to go into all doing all the big online events, big uh, book launches, everything else. Uh, clients of ours, names that people would recognize are Dean Graziosi, Tony Robbins, Click Funnels, Mike Fulsame uh just a few to name um you know we've seen this i'm you know talking about things go up and things come down we've seen literally that happen across the marketing world and landscape um not just in the info world but even you know in different in different niches across the board so things are changing things are getting more exciting right now um, on all platforms you know with all of the changes that have happened over the last few years so i'm excited to come and share some of the stuff that's working the uh I always say that advertising precedes the economy. And what I mean by that is, you know, the advertisers, and I know you know this, the advertisers start getting less and less return on their money. So they become more cautious where they're putting their money. And so obviously when they reduce their ad spend, what happens is nothing gets sold. If nothing gets sold, the economy takes a little bit of a dip. And so anytime I'm wanting to get a finger on the pulse of what's happening economically, I ask the people with the ad agencies, how are the spends going? So in your experience right now, how is all of that going? Are spends up, are spends down? Are they flat, are they the same? Um, it's really niche dependent across the board. Like there's some companies that are just completely contracting, pulling back very, very aggressively. Uh, there's some niches and people that are found, you know, like that are willing to go against the grain essentially that are spending more than we've ever seen them spend. Um, and the thing is really comes down to, you know, if we were to look at this from a market cycle and I look, I look at marketing, just like you said, as an economic cycle as well, everything runs in a seven year cycle. Um, what happened to our marketing cycle over the last seven years is COVID. COVID kind of pushed everything really far ahead and, you know, free money came. So everybody kind of started spending money through the roof and it just created this infatuation phase of craziness that kind of squeezed the two year gap really aggressively where the ones that thought they had built these massive businesses just really had offers that lasted that gap. So those kind of ruined it for a lot of people. Uh, but the ones that said, hey, I'm not going to fall for the infatuation. I'm just going to stay balanced across that entire play. And it's consistently grown. Those are the ones that have completely scaled across the board. And we're seeing those offers, essentially, whichever way you want to call it, print money hand over fist now. 
Good. What, what particular verticals or niches do you see that are thriving right now versus ones that maybe aren't doing quite as well? Info is always going to do well. Um, we're seeing a big turn back into events, actually, funny enough. So, like, I've had a couple, even just in the last three or four months, people that were in the offline space that went online that are going back to offline, uh, which I love, obviously, coming from my background. That's been one that's been really, really interesting. A lot of people are starting to do the free events again. So that's been great for us to see. Um, the other ones that are working insanely well, talking about, you know, as you were the, on the pre-show, you're talking about your friend that's been kind of been focused on health. Um, and taking his time into it, um, a lot of our health clients are just absolutely crushing. And I think the reason being is obviously with you know what we just came out of, um, which is a two-year phase. So everybody's like number one value on their entire life has gone to health. So everything from the med spas are crushing it for peptide companies, anything that have got like really good supplement offers um, and that are backed, obviously, not just, you know, just some affiliate degenerate affiliate offers that are in the neutral space. Um, but those are the ones that are really doing insanely well right now. And the market's just eating it up. Like I've seen a brand that came in two and a half ish years ago and you know they're currently spending north of three to four million a month right now on ads and they're a two-year-old company and what kind of products uh peptides got it yeah. and i think that you know there's a lot of kind of uh i i don't want to call them new age but newer uh concept kind of things like stem cells a good example mm -hmm. that i started I've, I've been seeing a lot of stem cell ads lately and i wasn't sure whether it was because it's what I'm considering for my knees that have been in massive pain for a few months or yeah. whether they're just advertising more. And I'm convinced that they're advertising more. I'm convinced. Oh, they're for sure advertising more. And we're even seeing a lot more lead flow with the stem cell companies. And it's interesting too, because I had a call talk about stem cells earlier this week with a client out of a uh, potential client out of Mexico, right? So the people that are obviously in US and Canada have got all these crazy health rules around stem cells in which I can't wrap my head around. But these guys are moving to Mexico, opening up these um, health clinics or whatever clinics. you want to call them yeah. down there. And they're just coming in and just cleaning house because people are willing to do the travel tourism. You know, Turkey is another big one. We are having a lot of conversations with uh, Turkish companies as well that are doing because with hair transplants and all the surgeries and everything else, people are willing to start go down, go down that road. So, yeah, stem cells is a big, big, big market right now. What do you think, uh, you know, obviously we're we're in a uh, presidential election year here in the United States. Much yeah. of what happens in the United States impacts everybody worldwide. What do you think is likely to happen between now and the election as far as economics are concerned? Canada, obviously, in my opinion, taking a massive misstep that's going to be corrected. I mean, quickly, the, it's it's not something that the general population is going to stand for. It was already horrific at 50%. Yeah. So to bump it another 25%, basically above what it already was, it's like insane. Yeah. And there's just, a, there's a point where the general public, John Galtz, and just says, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. You know, I'm just going to go away. going to find a ni nice little island in the Caribbean and, and, and live my life and, you know, catch my lobsters and not worry about what the rest of the world's doing anymore. What do you think is going to happen in the next few months? I think it's going to be interesting across the board, right? So when we looked at um, advertising through the last, and we've been down this road now through the last two elections with the U United States specifically, and, and then what I mean by at big spends, like north of, you know, $50, $60 million a year in managed spend. Um, I think it's going to get tight really very fast, probably coming into tail end of summer, because obviously a lot of, and, and then going into Q4 every year, everything just gets tight anyway because of all the brand spending. Um, economically, it's just going to be really dependent on what happens down in the States, right? Does Trump get back into power? Who wins all the craziness? Um, also, what the media tries to control. Obviously, one of the things talking about Canada, like last year, I'm sure you've seen, but they shut down all news. So we don't even have news on social media anymore. So it's like, it's just craziness what they're trying to contract and contract and contract. So it's, like, it's been very, very interesting to see from that part. Um, I think the one that's going to win really heavily this year is going to be social. Like if you can really double down on social, because at least at the, at the end of the day, you're still marketing, you're still pushing yourself out there um, and then taking that. And if you have some winners, like what we're doing and, and obviously adding some paid traffic behind it, those are going to be the big wins. Um, but I think, you know, looking at it from an advertising standpoint, there's certain networks that we're looking at right now, like Instagram, for example, last year was a very difficult one um just because of their algorithms and everything else but this year it's been great right since we turned over after we came out of the christmas rush it's been great for us and i think every platform really goes like in, in its own cyclical cycle during COVID, it was TikTok. now i think it's going to go back to what it is and then if you paid attention to what our good friend uh and you know 
crazy entrepreneur Elon Musk likes to do all the time. He just announced that he might be potentially bringing back, um, you know, the two the two social media platforms that Twitter bought, which is Vine and Periscope. So if those come back, that'll that'll create some other craziness as well later on this year to see what that does. So, so when you say double down on social, what does that mean to anybody that might be watching this show? Does that mean that they start just having more of a presence on social media? Does that mean yeah. that they focus uh, energies and in, in dollars that would have been put into marketing and ad spend? Should they be putting it into growing their social media platforms? Or what do you think that is? So th there's two ways I look at that, right? So when I say focus on social, I mean paid social as well as organic social, right? So there's two, there's two trends of thought. Now, while you're still continuing to run paid ads on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, whatever, whichever way you want to do, it's like pick a platform on a social media platform that you can double down on and spend your time doing. And, you know, I'm a walking example of that. Last year, around April, we doubled down on my Instagram and we started pushing just from a business perspective. And we're pushing, you know, six to eight posts a day. Um, it took us probably about seven to eight months to really see that traction and kind of grow consistently. And now anytime we have a video that pops or an, uh, an image that pops, we will we'll put some paid advertising behind it because now we know we can get more eyeballs on it because if the organic algorithm is really picking up on that. So it's like balancing it out, becoming a essentially, you know, spokesperson for your industry is another good way of doing it as well on social media, which obviously you've done for ages um, and kind of talking about, you know, the money mindset and everything else and just figuring out, okay, well, what, what is the niche? Who can you, who can you start educating around that and start just going hard because people are going to spend more time on that this year, I reckon. So tell me, uh, give me some strategies that somebody says, hey, I want to blow up my, my social media. Uh, how would they spend money to do that? Uh, do they, do they do what you just suggested? run social media see which pieces are working and then boost them or what's well, no, the, no, the, the worst thing you can do is hit that boost button all right learn how to use like you can go on youtube or if, you, if you've got a big enough budget you can come and have a chat with us about it and we can see if we can help you do that um but it's just learn how to run the actual paid advertising platforms through the back end of facebook ads and uh meta i guess meta advertising platform now um you know the the one that most people aren't paying attention to and i've spent the last probably two months really diving down into as well organically if you're in the b2b space is going to be linkedin linkedin organic right now is unreal like unreal for engagement um we are literally putting all of our resources from instagram that we spent last year into into linkedin this year so you'll see in the next 30 days even my linkedin is going to probably start pumping out content multiple times a day um and go down that route and then when we find one and the thing with linkedin is interesting because if you actually pay attention to it you're writing articles that are essentially direct response copy style articles right? you're giving value you take that and then you place that as an ad on any of your other platforms like facebook and then have some sort of a call to action if it went organic on one platform it's going to work as a paid ad on another platform so it's just like, how do you take one piece of creative and leverage it across multiple different platforms? Uh, what platforms are working right now? You, you said, obviously, Instagram is not working as well. LinkedIn is working better. Um, Instagram is working great for organic. So like if, you, if you're good on video, um, which uh, most people are really getting more comfortable around camera, I think we're just forced in that generation now is just to get comfortable around camera. Uh, like. LinkedIn, if you really like writing, I would say 100% go hard on LinkedIn if you can. Uh, YouTube is just kind of the, the goat, in my opinion, of all platforms, right? If you're willing to take the time and put out long form video content, you're never going to lose on YouTube. It may take you longer to, it, to build there, but it's, it's always going to be in the search, right? It's, it's not a, and even with, even one thing we learned about, uh, Instagram recently talking about the YouTube mytho like, um, thought pattern we saw so everything that we did from april till about call it september where it's like we had some wins and some you know peaks and valleys but nothing that just took off right like we had a video that took off about three months ago and did like nine hundred thousand views in two days like it was nuts but that one video what, what lifted. Was the, what was the content of that video um i talked about just my networking style um just kind of when i go into events and doing networking right just kind of just giving away little tidbits for b2b business owners and how they can win business really quickly that one video took off in two days and kind of blew up. But what we noticed was because that video took off, it lifted everything else, right? So it's like that in itself had its own. And if you understand how SEO works, it's like the compound effect of essentially how the SEO for your organic. So as much as people think like, oh, if people don't see it the first time around in the first 40 hours because the, the algorithm's not going to show it, I completely debunked that last year because it just it's the consistency over time with uh, with those platforms. 
I love it. Yeah. What uh, What is your brand? Obviously, you've got an agency. Uh, you yeah. do that. But you also have a personal brand. How is your personal brand different than your business brand? Uh, yeah. So the agency, which is growrev.com, um, that's been kind of something that we've been running very consistently since 2018. And my personal brand has just kind of been over the last few years is, you know, I've got GrowRev and then I've got another company, which is Scale to Sale with a partner of mine, Nick Bradley. And that one, we're now transitioning the personal brand, talking about how we take companies and scale them and have them have exits within three to five years. Um, so that's where my personal brand is going to be focusing towards. And in co uh, coincidentally, the scale to sale side, all of it feeds back to Goro because Goro has been my baby. And, you know, he's got to keep feeding that child as much as I possibly can. It's, uh, you know, I've been in this industry forever. I was chatting yeah. with uh, Adlai, the uh, viral video woman. Yeah, uh, she was a guest on the show yeah. and we were chatting about things. And back in 1994, I did an infomercial, a 28 and a half minute video that we did $120 million in sales in the first year. Wow. And I didn't really think anything about it because social media platforms didn't exist in the mid nineties. Yeah. Obviously as time has gone by and we're seeing as everything transforms, my belief is everything old is always new again, that yeah. human beings just cycle through everything. And when she was describing the elements that went into a strong viral video, I realized she was describing my mindset when I did the infomercial, that yeah. it was something that hooked people in with entertaining visuals, yet kept kept them on the edge of their seat with a future promise. You know, what was going to happen in the next portion? How do you keep them engaged and how do you keep them hanging on and staying there a little bit longer while you're delivering your marketing message? Yeah. Do you find... Um, uh, uh, we've worked with a lot of agencies and some of them better than others. And frankly, most of them really bad. Uh, what do you think is a, a good way for somebody that's, you know, maybe considering using an agency, maybe even, you know, using uh, grow rev. What do you think are some good questions they should ask to see if it's a good fit? The biggest thing is just, Hey, what experience do you have in working with my offer, right? Or what my business, do you have any experience? If you don't, what are you willing to do to prove that you can do this? Um, and a lot of times we run up into that situation too. We'll end up with the dealers that we've got no experience and then be like, all right, let's go. I'll run this for you for 60 days for free. And if we win, we want the entire business. So it's like, you know, are they willing to put their money where their mouth is? Because that kind of shows the confidence in, in their capabilities. If they kind of dance around the answer and don't give you a direct answer, I'd put my red flags up and go find someone that's got the experience because there's tons of agencies out there that have got experience in it. The shitty part about the ones that have burnt the industry over the last couple of years is just people that have kind of come up and, you know, trying to create this fake persona of them doing stuff, but they've actually never done what, done anything in the advertising platform, um, specifically on the social play. And I would just be doing a little bit more DD when you're hiring those agencies. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, there's a lot of posers on the agency side of things. Kind of, kind of like anything else that trends right now, agencies are trending. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, somebody that maybe has a bit of a social media presence start saying oh yeah we're doing all this we're spending a million bucks a month and we're yeah and it's like uh yeah but what about the results yeah and that's that, that's you know always the stepping stone that the people have got to get over uh what what do you think are the biggest things that someone needs to scale you've, you've got a company called uh, uh sales scale to, to scale. scale scale to sale yeah scale to sale what, yeah. what are some foundational things that you advise people do if they want to scale to make sure that they are saleable at the end of it all so they can have an exit? Um, well, five, they, there's a five part simple methodology that we put that we teach and we're running an event in this uh, in a couple of weeks here in L.A. actually breaking this down in much depth. And, you know, five well, simple things way, you got to well, plug your event. What's your event called? It's good. It's scale to sale mastermind.com. Um, it's going to be two days with Nick and myself, just to give you a little bit of background. Nick's done over $6 billion in exits. He comes from private equity, worked for, worked for Blackstone, uh, private equity, Providence, um, he has done over 117 mergers and acquisitions. And with everything that he's done on the exit side and all the brands that we've scaled and taken the exit by accident, not realizing our scaling methodology. And then they've had some nice paydays. We're like, Hey, why don't we teach this to people? Um, so two days of breaking it down and in the five steps that we kind of talk about it is, you know, putting together your number one is putting together your clear end game, understanding what that number you want. You know, for some people, it's 10 million. For some people, it's 100 million. For some people, it's bigger than that. Um, going deeper into that, you know, why does that number matter is what you're doing now going to get you there. That's part of understanding, breaking that entire part down. Number two of that entire uh, 
uh, methodology is going to be the strength in foundations. And what do I mean by that? Are you attempting to scale without actually doing the foundational stuff that you need? Is your operations in order, your team, your people, your structure, your processes, you know, are your quality of customers something that your potential strategic buyer or private equity is actually going to look at wanting to buy from you? Um, are your marketing, and that goes into, you know, what is going to be number three soon, I'm going to talk about here, which is your marketing activities. Does there a transfer of value with the marketing activities that you're doing that goes into what is number three? three and that's scaling up you know it, when you're scaling is your is what you're doing predictable repeatable and scalable and if it is how can you spend more to make it be more valuable to the end buyer you can't just rely really on organic at the end of the day and what i mean by organic paid and social can be organic but you also got to look at this strategic ways of acquiring like for us one of the things that we're doing on that strategic side is we're acquiring agencies right now left right and center uh, we're in a very, you know, and kind of going down that route because that's a strategic acquisition to have a big payout at the end of it. Um, and, the, you know, number four is going to be understanding how can we take the business and profit up from the business, right? Like we've, you've, you've built the foundation, you've had the clear end game in mind, you're scaling, but how do we increase profit? How does the business become more attractive? Are you doing the PR strategies? Are you, is your profitable, are you running at a good profit margin? Because sometimes there's businesses that we look at and then, you know, they're running at like a 50% profit margin. And I'm like, you're too profitable. You're not spending more where you should be scaling into companies. It, it makes more sense. Understanding from the outside in and the inside out, looking at that from a contrast perspective. And I actually just talked about this and doing this specifically in the info world as well on brands that can scale and exit last week in Tampa and getting ready for that entire thing. We're breaking that entire methodology down in, in LA here in a couple of weeks. Uh, what's the website for the event? Scale to sale mastermind.com. That's easy. Yeah. How many people are going to be there? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna max out at fifty uh, people just for this one, just because we want to have, and we're gonna do hot seats and everything else in there. So we're gonna max out at fifty. There's a few more tickets left, so if people want to come, let us know. If you come in for Marshall Silver's, maybe we'll invite you to a private little dinner if you come from this podcast. Well, heck, I, I may come up for that private little dinner. What what a great deal come that on would up. be. That would be. Um, yeah. What do you think is the future of live events? Obviously, you've got your finger on the pulse. You went through COVID. You experienced all of that. Before COVID, I was purely a live events person. Everything I do applies very specifically to live events, me hypnotizing people, me being able to see them in person and not just a you know, two-inch screen to be able to cold read them is really important to my process. And so when everything shut down, I kind of find my, found myself with my pants down going, what the hell do we do now? And, and some people brilliantly made the transition from uh, live events to virtual events or remote events and then back. Do you think that kind of like the workforce isn't returning to the building? Uh, do you think that, that live events will be impacted or do you think it's the opposite of that, that people even more so have an overwhelming desire to connect in person with people? So I'm going to go back to something that you said earlier and what is old is new and what is new is old, right? And this is where the, my method, like, and I'm having like synchronistically a lot of conversations from some of our old clients that ran big live events and they're all looking at coming back and coming back at a big play and i think people have got, got to a point where even the whole workforce hybrid workforce situation i think that whole thing is going to turn at some point people are going to want to go back to, uh, to to work in an office at some point when i don't know but it's just like even looking at our office it's like we tried the hybrid thing it's like when now we brought everybody back into the office and people are, are actually enjoying the camaraderie enjoying you know the people we're very human yeah beings. so that's that's my question are the workers <laughs> getting sick of working from home and saying no i need a break from my husband i need a break from my wife and kids I think that's um, going to happen. Like, there's no doubt about it. This is like, and then obviously the ones that are, you know, the nomad travelers and just loving life, living in Bali or Mexico or wherever the hell, those ones are just always going to do that. They, that's a big value for theirs. So to answer your question of the live events, I think it's coming back, and I think it's coming back very quickly. And I think people are the ones that really double down now on the live events are going to have a much more uh, advantageous run at once people really start to pick up and see, oh damn, people are really wanting to do this. That's my belief, too. You know, I believe yeah. that people will always pay more for a better experience. And clearly, there, there's no way to give anybody any better experience than they're getting digitally. I mean, you could mail out props or things that, you know, make them feel like they're actually there, but they're yeah. not. 
Yeah. And and there there's nothing that that comes close to being able to look into somebody's eyes or or sit beside somebody else in the room that might have similar challenges. That not only can the content solve your challenges for you, so can the network that's sitting in the room with. Correct. What uh, do you think? Uh, you know, obviously, you said information marketing products are mm -hmm. are certainly doing well right now. Yeah. Certain certain medical treatments and and health processes doing really really well right now. Mm -hmm. Inside of the information marketing process, are there any specific subsets that are doing better right now, like sales or relationship or or flat out wealth building? I think uh, we're in a situation where. Wealth building for sure. And wealth building always does really good, right? It just kind of, and like right now, crypto, absolutely flying. Like all of our crypto offers are doing well just because, you know, what's happening with Bitcoin and everything else. So that it just kind of got, it's got its own attention there. Um, we've got a bunch of real estate offers, absolutely crushing it as well. Um, and I mean, across, like we, we've got a section eight offer. We've got a, um, just a buy flip and just a typical buy uh, uh, fix and flip offer that's doing really, really well. Um, we've got a stock offer that's really starting to pick up wind. And I mean, really it went from $10,000 a month and currently probably pushing towards about a quarter million dollars a month and ad spend very, very fast. Um, the online business world, you know, there are certain ones that are doing well, certain ones that aren't, because I think a lot of people that were going down that online world during COVID that that two year squeeze that I talked about that did, you know, really well for a lot of offers. Uh, the biggest thing is going back to foundations, right? It's understanding, okay, what am I doing? What am I teaching? And what am I, how am I different compared to everyone else? And what can you bring to that as a methodology? There's a real estate offer that we're publishing that's going to be out probably within the next 30 to 45 days. Um, and it's such a blue ocean. And the reason being is we found an angle for it. We tested it to the market. We put some ad dollars behind it. And we're like, damn, this lead cost makes insane uh sense for us to double down on and we just found a new hook for it um so it's like it, at the end of the day it's like it's, information marketing has been since god only knows how long ago it's been going on for it's just you just got to find a new angle for it and just keep going okay yeah. what uh what did give me some typical uh parameters on on what people should expect or they should target. Obviously, we want to get as much as we can as a return on ad spend. But what is a minimal return on ad spend you think uh, a particular product type needs to get to make sense in the marketplace? Back when I launched my infomercial in 1994, uh, if you were running ads on the front end getting two to one, you, you could run a profitable show. Three to one, of course, was better. Yeah. Uh, when we launched Passion, Profit, and Power, we were getting 13 to 15 to one return on ad spend which wow. clearly with those kinds of numbers, we could massively overpay for ad spend and yeah. still be profitable. And, and we bumped Tony Robbins off the air for four months. They just couldn't run personal power because we could afford to spend so much. W what are some numbers uh, that, that people can say, hey, you know, if I'm getting a, a two to one on my ad spend, this is good or help yeah. me understand. Two, two, two to one is always going to be the, the ideal goal that you want to go for. Right. And there's two there's two trains of thought when I look at it. So it's like one going into the world that we're in today compared to where you've come from. The information world obviously is a little bit different. Now, the way I look at it is, are you as long as you get when you're starting out, can you go one for one? Right. For every dollar you put in, I'm making a dollar back on the front end. Now, there's front end and there's back end metrics, which we can talk about all day long when it comes in. on the front end for every dollar you spend. Can I at least break even? And if I can break even now, can I double down on that and make sure that my back end can deliver so it lifts my entire front end metrics? Um, when we start looking at clients that want to really scale, there's another methodology that we look at now. Like you said earlier, you said, you know, we, we were spending so much money that we Tony Robbins couldn't compete against us. And, it, and you essentially bottom out the market. And we the way we look at when we look at buying clients out the market is who's willing to spend the most on the front end to acquire a customer that you know through your process on the back end you can sell them you know whatever other products and deliver on those products and have a true outcome we've got a client right now that you know they look at a 21 minus 7 and what do i mean by that so for the first seven days whatever we spend on advertising they're willing to take an absolute loss on it and then the rest of the 14 days they want to be break even one to one so for three weeks, essentially, they're making no money if you really think about it. And then they're really looking at scaling on the back end. And for those guys, we're spending ten, fifteen thousand dollars a day minimum. What kind of a product is that? It's uh, it's in the it's in the Amazon information space. Got it. Yeah. So teaching people how to do online 
drop shipping. Drop, uh, yeah, online drop shipping and then online Kindle publishing as well. Very good. Yeah. What type of products, you know, everything's changed. What type of products do you think that aren't allowed to advertise right now that likely will be allowed to advertise soon enough as things shift and change? Uh, what comes to mind is maybe uh, CBD or cannabis in general. Uh, yeah, that like was always interesting. Like we see some stuff. We get offers to run CBD all the time. I just, it's just so hit or miss for me because, like, unless I'm con- like goes back to confidence, I'm not going to take it. There's certain agencies that I know that I can make interest to in that I've figured it out. Um, and I'm like, hey, if you figure it out, go work with them. And I make referrals to them all the time. Um, so if you've got a CBD product and you want marketing, I mean, I can you know introduce you to these guys. These guys are crushing it. It's just an interesting one. I could see, you know, as regulations change, probably, um, and if things get a little bit more looser, I would love to see that because I think it'll open up a whole different market. Cannabis in itself is a whole different one. Um, even with the peptide world right now that we're working in very closely, it's become one of the ones where, you know, the the governments are really starting to crack down on it because they've seen the growth of what these companies have done. Like the company I talked about, zero to $200 million in two years. Like that's nuts to see like um like some crazy numbers um but it all it always comes down to how how are we going to get controlled like if it's not the network it's usually the government and if it's not the government it's the network someone's trying to make our life difficult we just got to dance around them yeah somebody just wants to take more than their fair share is what it is exactly that's exactly it yeah what do you suppose are uh some of the trends uh you, you mentioned one in social media you know, you should be very conscious of your social media platform, something I've never looked at in the past and something uh, this broadcast is my way of saying, look, I'd, I'd like to be able to help you and assist you. Normally, I charge a lot of money. but We want to get on and teach you for free because I would agree that coming from terrestrial media myself, radio and television, as it used to be, my own belief is that radio and television stations as we knew them are going to go out of business. I've been preaching it for a while. We've seen some of the lesser places. Uh, You know, the local news uh, Mm -hmm. building is no longer being used for television. Every, all all those broadcasts are going national. So many, uh, you you take somebody like a Tucker Carlson, who was on Fox News. Yeah, Yeah, he's way way better off not being on Fox News, just being on his own. You take somebody like a, a Joe Rogan, who has more views than every single television program uh, running live on TV combined. Yeah. So wh- where do you think media in general is going? And then the second part of that question is, do you think there is a power at all? And if there isn't, regardless of the fact that we're live, do you think there's a power of live versus pre-recorded in its impact on the audience? I don't think there's that big of a difference on uh, live versus pre-recorded. It's how you deliver the message, right? Look, if you look at Joe Rogan, like you talked about, like he's none of his stuff is live. It's all pre-recorded, but he's built and stayed consistent over years. Like if you go back and see when he first started his original podcast, like the set just looked hilarious. And now it's obviously turned into a hundred million dollar plus whatever that deal that he got with Spotify was. Um, it's not so like live versus recorded. It just comes down to how you really can, you know, engage with your audience through whichever uh, modality you're using. Um, where do I see TV and radio? I think they're dead, uh, but they still do well. Like we've got connected TV that we're working with with some of our clients and just understanding how to actually leverage the, the people that are still paying attention there. Um, I think we still have at least another four to five years of good entertainment that's going to come out of there. Um, even if you look at, you know, um, something that I noticed this year, and I wasn't even paying attention to it was sporting is even going online a lot more right like if you look at f1 one's become massive but the only way to watch f1 really is through f1 tv right it's like so if you start literally looking at where they're going so it's like how do i how do we double down and get access to that advertising if there's even a play obviously that's a big big company that i'm giving as an example but there's the, there's that even now with us being in canada like i can get hockey i don't even have to turn my tv on i can just go on my amazon prime account and watch ho- my hockey games directly on there so it's like it's crazy to think where everything is going um the one part of going back to you said terrestrial yourself from a marketing perspective is um what's working for us right now is actually direct mail really well and which is you know crazy to think because anytime you you know the way i look at things is okay if everybody's spending money online where are people not spending money and then we're like okay well no one's really putting time and effort we did this with the free to fee events because like no matter how much we drive drove registrations through online there was still a team that was doing direct mail just to pick up anything that we weren't that we could hit 
And we started testing that towards the end of last year with some of our clients and it's paid dividends massively. And the costs for direct mail are so cheap. Like it's so cheap in comparison to that. If you even take like 10% of your budget and go test it and done correctly, um, there's some pretty big wins to be had there. Direct mail. Uh, so are you guys now in your agency doing direct mail for your clients? We don't directly do it for our clients, but also we have a partner company that we work with that has just figured it out um, and they're doing it at a stupid volume for, for some big brands. Good. Well, I certainly am interested in finding out more about that because I'll make an you know, intro one, directly, yeah. I would love that. Uh, what do you think about remnants in the terrestrial media space? There's a lot of people advertising right now, radio, television, print spots, uh, dirt cheap, you know, buy, buy advertising at a 70, 80 percent discount. Do you think there's any value in that? And the only reason I'm asking is I come from radio and yeah. and I, I remember what the business was, except I have not turned on my radio in my car 10 years at least. I listen to Spotify and I pay for no ads. So like, yeah, I think about well, that, well, right? and I don't even listen to Spotify. I just if I want to listen to music, I plug in my phone, you know, and yeah. I listen off my device. And, and I I just think that the majority of people, they're either on satellite specifically Mm -hmm. or or they're not i don't think anybody's watching terrestrial and i think the same is fairly true about television i've got a couple of tv shows that i like i happen to like a lot of the stuff that dick wolf does law and order fbi and those mm -hmm. kinds of shows but i don't watch them on on network television i just wait till they're on apple tv and download it so i don't have to watch the commercials i think, I think, think that i think that whole world's done um we tested last year even we tested some series xm ads last year didn't perform nowhere near what we thought it was going to perform right and it goes back to it's like at the end of the day test right like at the beginning of this at the beginning of the show i said just try different things if you don't know what you're doing just try um and it, even the direct mail thing we're like hey no one's doing it why don't we try it it ended up being a friggin' winner that we never expected it to be because we were like oh well, let's just but we had to give it a shot at the end of the day as marketers you're always split testing and testing things that are going to come from it so i don't know i don't like well, I'm not putting my any of my money there right now at all from an advertising perspective. It's just not worth it. I'd rather try new networks and new angles and new uh, forms of media than than go go down that side of terrestrial stuff. Is direct mail a similar metric as far as our our ROAS goes for what I spend and what I get back? It is, uh, and just making sure that obviously you can track it directly that it's coming from there, right? The guys that we work with, they've got a very, they've got a very dialed methodology around it, um, and everything that they're doing is directly through uh, tracking, uh, attributing it to a ROAS model. And do you think that the demographic that responds to direct mail is higher in a an older demographic it versus is, a younger demographic? It is definitely demographic? an older demographic. Yeah, it is definitely That's, an older demographic for sure. Uh, they're yeah, anything forty five plus. We're noticing is, is picking up really well there. Yeah, that's what I would think, and I would think anything under forty five would be massively ineffective. Yeah, um, it, if it's if it's not an offer that we can send to forty five plus, we're not we're not hitting direct mail. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I I would think that a lot of seniors and I, I don't yeah. even like using that word because i'm at level 61 gonna be 62 this year um i would think that the, my demographic might look at the male but i don't think my wife's demographic gives a damn you know 20 years younger i don't think she cares at all uh i think that that you know the the kids go out to the mailbox they grab the mail and if it's not personally addressed to us we don't even really look at it, it just goes right into the file into half the, the time i get file. mail and i'm just like what what is this unless it's from the government or something that i gotta open up and i'm like oh what tax bill am i paying now kind of situation yeah, the only, it, real, only real one that i care to look at right and even then you don't want to open it mm -hmm. uh, what about what about programming uh, are we do you believe that programming uh, on terrestrial uh, radio if advertising is not working certainly programming couldn't so do you think if somebody wants to launch a TV show, as an example, mm -hmm. I've got this idea for this TV series, do they launch it and, and see if they can get it sold to network television? Or do they say, why bother? Let's just go to di digital release and release it on a, I'd go a platform. To, I do. There's a lot of there's a lot of big guys right now in the info space that are doing phenomenal. Like they've taken essentially a TV idea and broke it down into episodes and shows and just launching them on YouTube. And, and, you know, double downing on that methodology and then spending ads to obviously promote it and kind of go down that route. 
uh, one of the methodologies. So give, me an, give, give me an example of some of that programming that's that's winning. So like, that. like, yeah. So for example, uh, I think what was it two or three years ago, uh, we relaunched and did the movie Thinking Grow Rich the movie. We ran the traffic for it, and they created this movie and this phenomenally well shot movie. And they're like, "What do we do with it?" I'm like, "Well, why don't we just run it online?" And like, "What do you mean? Like, why don't we just run the typical, uh, you know, lead flow through, get them to purchase something, and then if they do, they get access to the movie." And that's exactly how we just sold the movie. And then obviously there's a flow through of all the books and everything else. So now what we're calling them is, you know, just essentially docu-series um, and, and pushing them that way. You can go back to, hey, you know, come in and learn this with you. you got your money show or money mindset show, whichever way you want to do it. You could do a weekly episode that comes out, but you're just building your front end list as well while you're marketing it on the front end and then just releasing it to your audience. Now, not only are they getting attention from you and the release could be directly on YouTube, so you're pushing it there um, and and go down that route. And not only are you building a list that you can market to and you know potentially sell other offers and products and things that you really want to monetize from. So now you're controlling your media, not only on the viewership, but you're also controlling it on the audience side too. Uh, before we wrap up, any, any last pieces of advice that you uh, want to give to people that are wanting to maybe explore the digital space, advertising, uh, you know, running offers in the people that you assist? Um, the biggest thing that I usually tell people across the board is just, you know, a lot of people look at it and get so overwhelmed by a lot of this entirety that we talk about what's going on online. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. The ones that, you know, win at scale are just, they're not overcomplicating anything. Um, and just start. Right. I think that's the biggest one that a lot of people have. If there's so many people that I get to meet and talk to from events and everything that we've, you know, we've got, we've been to the fortunate advantage of being at. And I'm like, why is this not out there? Like, you need to be talking about this. Just start sharing. Even if you start putting it out for free, who cares? Put it out for free. Start getting the traction. Um, the craziest part is one of my old videographers that worked with me for two years is now turned, an info they turned into an information product just on the central fatigue style. I'm like, dude, talk about this. And he just started talking about it and he started into a multi six figure business and was my videographer and now a client of mine. So which is crazy. Oh, that's a good move. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how do people get a hold of you to find out more information and or if they want to join you up for uh, the event that's going on in L.A. in a couple of weeks? Yeah, if you want to just reach out, reach out. My, I'm the most personally active on Instagram. So Rohan underscore chef. There you go. Um, that's my Instagram handle. That was perfect timing. Uh, if you want to potentially look at coming to the event, it's scale to sale mastermind.com. Um, it's going to be in L.A. Uh, May 3rd and 4th. And if you like golfing, we're going to take the ones that like golfing on the Sunday the 5th um, down at, I believe we're going to be doing it at Pelican Bay, I think, or Pelican Beach, whatever it's called there. Um, and then if you if, if you want us to look at potentially helping you run your advertising or your emails or SEO, it's growrev.com. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, Rohan, for being on the show. I appreciate you taking the time. I look forward to uh, seeing you guys soon. Until we chat, make it an awesome day. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Marshall. You bet. Hey, it's a good day filled with love, health, opportunity, and potential. If you're digging on this show, and I know you are, then I look forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same bat station. I'm Marshall Silver. Make it an awesome weekend. God bless. Hey there, moguls. It's me, Marshall Silver, your personal millionaire maker. Getting very excited about my brand new show coming up two hours a day, five days a week. I'm going to broadcast live to you. I'm going to give you content, information, emotional, mental, physical, and even spiritual power. I'll also invite some of my cool multimillionaire and billionaire friends onto the show to give you more direction, more advice for having it all. All the knowledge to get everything you want and so much more. All you got to do is log in to the show to get information coming to you live from the bunker right here at Studio Money. So stay tuned.